Good morning, Mr. Chairman and members. For the record, my name is Jessica Boston, and I'm here on behalf of the Texas Association of Business, respectfully testifying against HB 170. Uh, TAB represents thousands of business members from across the state and over 200 local chamber partners who represent companies of all sizes and industry sectors with a significant part of TAB's membership in small business. As you know, small and medium-sized businesses are among the majority of businesses that struggle to afford uh, to provide health insurance for their employees. To that end, the Texas Association of Business opposes coverage, coverage mandates on employer-sponsored health insurance. HB 170 would prohibit enrollee cost sharing for diagnostic mammograms through co-pays, co-insurance, or deductibles, resulting in increased premiums for Texas employers and employees. In a survey of NFIB members, the cost of health insurance was ranked as the number one problem and concern uh, and priority for small business owners. Approximately 48% of Texans receive employer-sponsored health insurance, yet those numbers continue to decline each year. Employers continue to drop insurance coverage because of the ever-increasing cost of health insurance. Uh, Texas has more than 40 mandated health benefits, the third most in the country, and each time a health insurance mandate is added, it can raise the cost of monthly premiums by up to 5%. For every 1% increase in premium costs, Texas employers and employees are responsible for an estimated $230 million in the fully insured market. Adding health benefit mandates will only contribute to the high cost of health insurance for small employer and in individual policies. And employees ultimately pay the price of mandated benefits through higher premiums, higher co-pays, reduced wages, and even benefit reductions. HB 170 requires health insurers to provide additional coverage for diagnostic mammograms, but screening mammograms are considered preventative care and are a covered benefit under the Affordable Care Act. Additional coverage for diagnostic mammograms with uh, another health mandate will only increase premium costs. TAB understands the importance of women's health and mammograms, and we continue to support the current coverage for preventative mammograms. Thank you for your time. Happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Chairwoman Davis. Yes, um, so you, you've heard the discussion about for a lot of women, the diagnostic mammogram is essentially preventative. So does the Texas Association of Business oppose that? Uh, well, as um, increased costs go in, it's not that it's not a cost. The cost would come into um, those those premiums. And yes, the, the TAB is concerned with those increased costs as employers are having to decide on if they can continue to provide the health insurance coverage that they want to be able to provide. But if, uh, but if a mammogram is diagnostic for let's say someone who is a cancer survivor wouldn't the cost of health insurance go up if those women are not allowed to get those mammograms and thus their cancers um, are not detected till stage two and three um, and the obviously the subsequent treatment would be uh, much higher much more expensive than if you were able to have a, a diagnostic mammogram and it's caught at stage one Yes, ma'am, certainly. Obviously, to not catch those um, would certainly be tremendous increased costs. I think as we're thinking about it, we're thinking of that cost sort of spread across um, for employers trying to provide those benefits and everyone sort of having to address those costs. Um, and that sometimes that can result in employers having to decide on if they can provide those benefits. And how many female employees, I guess, are represented by the Texas Association of Business? Um, I don't have that number, but I'm happy to get it for you. <laughs> They don't represent employees, they represent employers? All right, yeah. <laughs> None? None, okay. Um, but I assume that the Texas Association of Business um, values female employees and what they bring to work and to business. Absolutely, and yes, ma'am. I assume that they also want those women to be alive and able to work. <laughs> Absolutely, yes, ma'am. <laughs> and again, continues to support the um, already required preventative health screenings, although I understand there's a question on if a diagnostic could be covered. So, thank you. Yes, ma'am. Representative Johnson. Um, as a small business owner who pays health insurance for their employees, I totally understand the point of view. But, however, um, you say that it's going to provide an increased cost. How much are you talking about? I mean, what is your expected increased sense of cost for providing diagnostic mammography coverage? 
Certainly. Um, as I mentioned in my testimony, as we understand um, health insurance mandates, even for uh, a 1 percent increase can be an additional $230 million into the, the pool that everyone is trying to cover in order to address these costs. So um, I could certainly try to get, if you know, we're saying that the diagnosis could be 300 to $800, I could try to get um, a specific number for you. But um, it's a shared cost of being able to cover everyone that would um, change the, the contracts that employers have with their health plans. Right, but I mean we have mandated coverages, right? And that, and then we've decided that those are important for a reason for the health of our citizens. Um, and also when early detection saves much more exponential costs down the road. And so um, in opposing this one particular me you know situation of diagnostic mammography, which I think we can all agree overwhelmingly uh, can produce is, is a great tool for prevention and much greater cost savings in particular in the employment workplace I would much rather have an employee have a diagnostic I pay for that as an employer and have that test done early where they could have an early minor intervention versus a very complex drawn out cancer care as an employer I would much rather provide that benefit to my employee and have them have a much you know less complicated uh, course of treatment um, from early detection. I mean, don't you think that that would favor business as well? Absolutely, and I think it's not that uh, text, like TAB doesn't want to be able to provide that. It's that some of our members may not be able to afford it as we continue to increase the amount of mandates that are required across the state. But yet we still don't know what an exact cost of this one particular coverage would provide on comprehensive premium. And I'm no. happy to get a, a, okay. an estimate for you. All right, thank you. Yes, ma'am. Members, are there any other questions? Yeah, Chairman Turner. Thank you. Um, I want to go back to your comment about, uh, let's see, it's here, your testimony about each time a health insurance mandate is added, it can raise the cost of monthly premiums by up to 5%. Yes, sir. Is there, do you have data to show that a previous mandate that the sure. state has added has raised health insurance premiums by up to 5%. I'd be happy to get that data for you, yes, sir. Because I'm looking at, you know, our list of mandated services, you know, like prostate cancer screening, colorectal cancer screening, um, immunizations through age 6 without cost sharing. Um, I, I, you know, there's a lot, there's obviously more, um, as, you, as you point out in your testimony, but... You know, those would be, I think, fairly common uh, procedures or services that are performed. Um, I have a hard time believing that a 5% premium increase would be the result of any of those. And most of the other ones I'm looking at are, would be, I think, much more, much less common uh, that, as opposed to, say, a colorectal cancer screening. So. Certainly, and I'm, I'm happy to, to go back and see what I, if, what I can find as an example of some of those higher costs um, specifically yeah. related to those mandates. Okay. Is that, like I say, 5% five, 5 just seems, seems like a high number for, particularly in, in a case like we're talking about today in this bill, uh, <coughs> relative to the entire population, a relatively few Perfect. number of uh, people would require this type of diagnostic breast screening. Certainly. Yes, yeah, yeah. Please let us know what you what you can provide on Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Dr. Bonnie, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just had a couple of housekeeping uh, questions. So, with respect to um, to TAB, is your your understanding that this legislation would impact ERISA plans? Um, I believe they would be um, outside of this. So we're talking about. Um, I may. I'm sorry. I may have to get back to you on that. Um, my understanding. So it would seem most uh, of the employers with self-funded plans would perhaps not be subject to this statute. Is that your understanding? That's my understanding and that so it would make it an even smaller portion of business owners who are having to um, cover the cost of this additional mandate. Right. And uh, can, who, um, who are your constituent members at, at TAB? Um, we have thousands of members of, uh, as I said, of businesses of all different sizes. Um, everything from. Um, Are any the of the um, health plans represented on your board? Uh, yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. Certainly. Members, any other questions? 
Uh oh, yes. I'd like to recognize Representative Vois present. No other questions? Thank you so much. Thank you. Appreciate your time.